Oh no. Can't believe I got injured like that. Oh no, there's everyone laughing at me. It's terrible. That was the Mithun and Ravindran, the hair flip, the cricket. You have to go ask him for help. Okay, yes, Rosemary, our cricket team sucks. Please go. 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 Are you Mithun and Ravindran? <laughs> yeah. I am. Oh my god, me and my friends are your biggest fans. You're such a great cook at player. Thanks. Um, is it possible you can help our team? Sure, what do you need help with? We're really bad. <laughs> okay, well we'll see what I can do. So, what's the problem? So the team we're playing next week is our rival team and they have a really good swing bowler and we don't know how to play against a really good one. Yeah, we don't know what to do. Please help us. Well, to play against swing bowling, you really need to understand the physics behind it. I don't really have time today, but if you come back tomorrow, I can explain the physics to you. Well, it sounds like you guys are talking about something really interesting. What is it? Max, we're talking about the incredible sport of cricket. Yo, man, what is cricket? Cricket is essentially like baseball, but there are some notable differences. What happens is that there, there are two teams. One is a fielding team, one is a batting team. The fielding team's objective is to get the batsman out. The batting team will send two of their 11 members out to the crease to score runs. So like baseball, the objective is to score runs after the bowler, who is sort of like the pitcher, throws the ball. What happens is the batsman will continue to bat. So rather than just batting once and scoring the run, the batsman will continue to bat until they get out. Okay. And the objective of the bowling team is to get all ten of the batsmen in the batting lineup out. Okay. Thank you. Is or the danger is that by bowling the inswinger constantly he loses the effectiveness of the outswing. Swingers, well, he's got this one right. Did he get a tickle on it? Was it doing too much? hit it, did it do too much in going down, it went quite late. Next great catch! It was full and wide, the length is what drew him into the shot, it was full. Manny playing an excellent catch. Alright, so before we get into the actual physics of swing bowling, it's important to understand how scientists came up with it. What they did was they ran a bunch of cricket balls through a wind tunnel where fluids were forced along the ball to mimic the flow of air around the ball. So what ended up happening was they plugged the numbers that they got from the wind tunnel into this equation, which is the Reynolds number equation. NR is Reynolds number, which is equal to VDP over N. V is the velocity of flow of the fluid, which is measured in meters per second. D is the diameter of the pipe which the fluid is being forced through, which is in, measured in meters. P is the density of water, which is measured in kilograms per meters cubed. N is equal to the dynamic viscosity of the fluid, which is measured in kilograms per meters per time seconds. And V is equal to the kinematic viscosity of the liquid, which is measured in meters squared per second. So what ended up happening was they plugged these numbers in and then went to this interpretation, which is when Reynolds number is smaller than 2,300, the flow is considered to be laminar. And if, the and if Reynolds number is larger than 4,000, it's considered to be turbulent. Now, the characteristic of laminar flow is that it's very smooth, well, whereas turbulent flow is a lot more disruptive. Now we can move on to how this actually affects the ball. Let's assume that the ball is traveling in this direction, right? And now we have wind meeting the ball like that. What happens with conventional swing? 
is that as the ball is hit by the bat, the ball becomes rough because the shine on the ball is removed by the impact with the bat. So let's make this side of the ball rough. What happens is in real life, the cricket team that's fielding will shine one side of the ball because they can't really control which side of the ball the batsman hits. So they just allow one side to be rough and they shine the other side after every delivery. On this side, the air will meet the ball. It will come around like that. Notice that this flow is very smooth because, again, there's laminar flow on this side, which is smooth. And then on this side, the flow is laminar to start with, but there's the seam of the ball, which is raised here, which trips up the laminar flow and makes it turbulent. It's now disturbed. Then as it meets the rough side of the ball, it becomes more turbulent. The characteristic of laminar flow is that it will leave a spherical object early, while turbulent flow will leave a spherical object late. So now the airflow will leave like that from the, the laminar flow and will leave like that from the turbulent flow. This produces a wake on the ball in this direction. Now assuming that there was no swing, the ball would just travel like that. But because of this wake, the ball will now travel like this and swing away from the bat. All right, so using this information, I'm sure you can figure out how reverse swing works. Okay, so basically why, why we're talking about reverse swing is in conventional swing, one side of the ball is required to be shiny. However, in countries where cricket's really popular, like India and Pakistan, it's, the air is too dry for one of the sides to be shiny. So that is why we're talking about reverse swing, where both sides are rough. So continuing on from what Lauren said, because both sides are rough, the air so this side has air turbulence, but also this side has air turbulence because the other side's rough too. But because of the seam, it has more air turbulence. So the lesser, the less air turbulence has more flow. Therefore, it overpowers the the side with more turbulence. And Swing bowling seems to defy Newton's first law of inertia, which, which states that objects in motion will stay in motion. Because you would expect the ball to travel in a straight line the whole time, but it ends up curving because of the swing. This happens because inertia is proportional to mass, and the cricket ball is not very heavy. So if the bowler throws it right, it is able to swing mid in the air. However, if the ball was heavier, swing bowling would not be possible. Newton's second law is also involved in bowling. We know that the net force equals to mass times acceleration. So if the bowler wants to make the ball travel faster so that it is harder for the other team to bat, they have to apply more force since the mass is constant. However, this can also have a detrimental effect because of Newton's third law that states that every action has an equal but opposite reaction. So if the amount of force the bowler exerts on the ball will also be exerted on the bowler by the ball. So this means that if the bowler is using a lot of force, over time this can lead to injuries or strains on the bowler because bowling is a very repetitive motion and doing it back over and over again will put force on the same parts of the body. What's the song?